Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Goronsky. I am a choir director from Long Island, New York. Uh, so happy to be with you all. Special thanks to Sarah Kavanaugh for inviting me um, to this conference. Um, I wish I could be there in person, but I'm happy to be here virtually. Um, before we dive into um, today's uh, topic, um, just, just so you know a little bit about me, um, again, my name is Matthew Goronsky. Um, I'm a choir director from Long Island, New York. Um, I teach both middle school and high school choir. Uh, more specifically, I teach uh, eighth grade chorus, uh, sixth grade general music, uh, freshman choir at the high school, and I also have several extracurricular ensembles that I teach. Uh, I teach a uh, middle school chamber choir, pop choir, and men's choir, um, and also teach uh, the high school acapella choir. Um, and, uh, and, and I, I love what I do. Um, and also a, a little bit about me, um, and before we uh, dive into, again, digital choir resources uh, for rehearsals and online learning, um, I have a couple pictures just because it helps, um, you know, just to kind of know who, who you're going to listen to for the next, you know, couple minutes. Um, so uh, th there's my daughter. <laughs> uh, I have, uh, she actually, she's a little bit younger there. She just turned two. Um, we kind of celebrated her birthday in, in quarantine, and she's a little firecracker, um, as you can see there. Um, and there's my son, uh, Cole, and he is three, going to be four in August. Um, and there's, there's our family pre-quarantine. <laughs> We all look. We uh, we all look a little different now, I guess you could say, as, as I'm sure some of you out there do also. Um, but th we're talking about digital choir resources uh, for for rehearsals and online learning. Um, a little bit about uh, my story and what has kind of led to uh, me being able to share these resources with you right now uh, is I I love creating music and I've also I've always loved technology um, from from an early age. I loved composing and writing music from, you know, even when I first started taking piano lessons and then, you know, started uh, learning music theory and, and, and uh, just delving into uh, all the different ways to record uh, myself. I remember I had this old, like, compact desktop computer where I would record. Um, there was, like, one program in PCs then. It was called Sound Recorder, and I would record myself um, and uh, was always exploring different options. I think the, the keyboard that I had at the time had a, a hard disk um, where you can actually physically re record. So I've always been um, interested in this uh, meshing of technology and music and art. Um, and so that's kind of led to, to, to where I am today. Um, I, I've been teaching choir for, uh, it's, it's crazy to say, over 10 years now. Um, and I also um, direct my, my, my church's choir and I compose for them as well. Uh, so, so I really enjoy what, what, I'm, what I do. And not until, I want to say about roughly around three years ago, um, I, I started, um, I created my own website and, and wanted to share some of my personal compositions and I started making memes and uh, <laughs> just to, to kind of uh, show you, um, or you know what, actually before I show you a meme, which I hope you will enjoy, let me just give you uh, just a quick rundown of what you kind of uh, can expect for the next uh, couple minutes. So yes, we're going to talk about digital choir resources for rehearsals and online learning. And um, here's, here's our basic outline here. We're going to, uh, I'm going to show you some choir vocal warm-up videos. Um, it's a 70 second solfege, which is a, uh, it's a choir sight singing video instructional series that you'll see. Um, and also I'm, I, before we, uh, somewhere in, in here, I'm also going to show you a, a cool, uh, solfege, uh, like sight singing dictation game that, that you'll see. I'll also show you some interactive, uh, choir rounds, um, and also talk to you about the music tech mastery online course. Um, and uh, so anyway, my, my journey to this point, actually, <laughs> it started uh, it started with with creating memes. And um, I, I've always liked humor. I include humor in, in my teaching and I, I believe my students enjoy that, too. And um, I, I had a couple memes that kind of went viral and I've continued to, to make memes uh, in part because I, I love I love the idea of. Uh, sharing humor. There's a, it's almost like a weird community uh, through, you know, very niche humor, especially when we're talking about like, you know, 
choir directors and 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 uh, and, and music teachers. Um, so anyway, the, you've you've actually might have seen this is uh, one of my more recent memes uh, here. Uh, check check this one out if you haven't seen it. <laughs> All right, I'm not I'm not going to play the whole thing, but you kind of you kind of catch catch the idea, um, and maybe you can relate to that, especially in the strange virtual choir online learning time, where you know choir directors and music teachers you know have been you know demanded. I I want this virtual choir. We need to create this, and I hopefully you haven't had to endure that pressure. I know me personally, I recently had to. Uh, um, put together a virtual choir of my eighth grade course for their moving up ceremony of them singing the Star Spangled Banner. And uh, long story short, one of the uh, assistant principals from my school uh, followed up with me and said, oh, you know, can I have that by next week? Um, and this was in May. Uh, meanwhile, I was thinking, well, the moving up ceremony is not till June. Anyway, um, hopefully you haven't had to endure that pressure. But anyway, talking about memes, um, I, I created uh, a bunch of different memes and I, long story short, kind of developed this community of other music teachers and, and choir directors. And in hearing some of the similar problems that, that we were facing, um, I began to to think of creative ways to kind of solve some of, some of these problems. And um, as, as we go through as we go through this, uh, the, these these different um, these different topics, you know, uh, again, we're, we're going to talk about you know choir vocal warm up videos, and this idea was it actually came from uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to get my my choirs warmed up and ready to go, ready to to dive into their music as soon as possible, but but I didn't want to minimize the importance of of warming up vocally. And um, I created these these different um, uh, choir warm up videos, and actually I made one and I just put it up online, and I forget how many people uh, downloaded it, and I got so much you know tremendous uh, feedback, and actually you know um, uh, let, let me show you uh, that that this was uh, the first um, this was the first uh, choir choir vocal warm up video that I created. All right, if you want to start following the tempo that you see in here, you could start pulsing on an SH sh sound. Let's start with quarter notes. Ready? And sh. All right, and let's get ready to switch to eighth notes on every beat. Try and keep them consistent. And get ready, we're gonna start changing the tempo, still keep eighth notes. That's right, yep, it's faster, you can do it. Let's get ready to switch to half notes, two beats. One, two, one. If lip trills, if you can't do any lip trills, feel free to hum along or sing an ooh vowel. So you kind of get get the idea there, and I created these. Uh, this was my first um, choir vocal warm up video. Put it up. It got so much uh, tremendous uh, feedback from it. I, I started to create more and more, and this was I think about two years ago, roughly a little less than two years ago, when I first created uh, this first uh, choir vocal warm up video. And since then, I think I have a total of five uh, five of these these warm up videos, and. Little did I know that um, in this new online learning phase that we all are kind of struggling through, um, I was thrilled to hear so many you know choir directors who have really appreciated these these choir uh, warm up videos and um, 
they're, they're up on my website where you can uh, purchase a whole package of all these five uh, warm-up videos. And the thing that I like about them is and for, for both, again, because we're the, the, the guiding idea in this um, in this short session is, you know, the, these are resources that you can use for online learning and in the classroom learning. What I like about these uh, choir warm-up videos for the classroom is I can basically hit play on the computer that has this projected in, in my room and I can walk around the class, take attendance. And also, you know what, like to be honest, uh, vocal warm-ups in, in a lot of, you know, choir rooms is that it's that moment where people think it's not important. And the fact that I'm able to hit play and move around the classroom, I can monitor that, you know, student participation in a really unique way. Um, and I've had, you know, choir directors who've, who've told me that their administrators in particular really, you know, liked this. Um, and my, mine as well. I, I use these, these warm-ups in my, with my own choirs, of course. Um, and it's a really great tool. Now for online learning, um, uh, I've had, you know, uh, teachers reach out, reach out to me asking, hey, is this okay if I use this online? And I'll say right off the bat, all of these resources are fine for online use um, as long as you're not uploading them to some other kind of, uh, you know, video sharing site, whether it be YouTube, Vimeo, or some other platform. Um, but if you're using them on Google Classroom, that's what I um, created these for, is, is for online learning and for in, in the classroom. Uh, but little did I know how, you know, online learning would be as important as, as it is right now. Um, and let me just show you just one more quick... Uh, quick warm-up video here. This was my most recent one. Had some fun with this. I actually made a hip-hop. All right, we're going to start on oh, well, three vocal <laughs> sirens that's on not the, That's not the hip-hop one. Let me tell you, I did make, I, I made a hip-hop, a hip-hop um, uh, hip vocal warm-up video um, where there's like beats in the background and stuff. And my, uh, it was nerve-wracking for me because I didn't know how my students were, were going to um, react to it, but they really loved it. And the cool thing about it was this hip-hop uh, warm-up video um, it, it kind of drew in some of those students who are like, you know, too cool for choir. Um, and if you teach middle school or, or high school, it, <laughs> anywhere in that range, you know, there's, there's so many students who are like too, too cool for their own shoes type thing. Um, but anyway, this is, this was the, the second one here and kind of see some of the evolution going on here. Starting low up to the top and back down again, deep breath in and keep going all the way up. Keep going, and back down again. The louder you siren, the more those colors move in the background. So we're gonna try and take an even deeper breath this time and make those colors move more deep. Again, Zia. Try and leave your jaw nice and dropped, every vowel. about the target solfege. Next to soul. Right, we're gonna try the same thing a little higher, but we're gonna speed up the tempo. Try and follow the tempo. All right, and you kind of get the hang of that as well. Um, and let me just say this right off the bat. How are you creating these resources? And uh, just to give you a little fast forward to in about 10 minutes, I'll show you the Music Tech Mastery online course uh, where I, I go through how I created um, these, these, these digital resources um, in, in much more detail and actually teach you how you can create your own um, digital resources for, for, for your choir. Um, anyway, uh, so moving along here, we talked about um, uh, choir, choir warm-up videos. Um, the, the next point, uh, the, the next thing that I actually created right after this, uh, I was trying to think of, you know, what, what, what's a, what's a fun, I, the, the post, let's put it this way, the, the post concert, uh, performance activity is always a, a tough one. Your typical, you know, at least in my experience, your typical music teacher will, you know, have, have students watch the concert and then maybe, you know, you have some, some karaoke or you have some some kind of a, a fun fun time and I wanted to create a fun game for choirs that was fun but also educational um, and I came up with this um, with with this uh, super solfege seven which is this, this game and, and let me let me show you down here welcome to super solfege seven 
the game where audiation is key. I'm Mr. Goronsky, and I'll be guiding you through today's game. In case you don't know what audiation means, audiation is our ability to visualize music in our mind. For today's game, that's exactly what you want to do. On the sheet in front of you, there are several different pitch and rhythm examples. As you listen to the different pitches and rhythms that are played, try your best to visualize what they look like in your mind. Then, mark an X through the corresponding box on your paper. Cheating is never a good idea, but especially today, given the fact that there are different versions of the game handed out. There are several different ways to win Super Soul Fetch 7. You can cross out seven boxes in a row horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. The first person to cross out seven boxes correctly in a row wins. Let's get started. For our first set of examples, all right, and you kind of get the hang of it there as well. Um, and it's it's this um, again, it's a self-guided game uh, where you know it, well, it was just explained to you where where you you're basically playing kind of like bingo, um, but the students are listening for these different pitch patterns and rhythm patterns and marking them off on on their paper. Um, and uh, it's been it's been a really great activity, and I've been able to reuse it with with on with ensembles. Um, it's been been a lot of fun. Um, so check that out. Also, it's called Super Solfege uh, Seven, um, and I I, I kind of added that as an as an extra extra point in here. Uh, the other resource that I wanted to talk to you guys about um, this is actually I created last summer, um, and it it was <laughs> the in, the intention was to to basically help my, my choirs, not just my individual students, but to help my, my choirs at large, how, the, um, how, how, to, how to kind of bridge the gap at, or ease the pain, I should say, <laughs> of, of sight, sight reading. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure you all can relate out there. You have your students who are really, you know, they're on the money. They know how to sight sing and, and they're fantastic. And then you have the students who are, who really struggle with, with, you know, sight, sight, sight singing. Um, you know, m maybe you have a, a bunch of, you know, students with IEPs in your, in your classroom. Um, and, and it's really tough to reach those students. And I wanted to kind of create, uh, to t basically take the idea of that automated, choir warm-up video and use some of that special sauce in this um, in this other program which I called uh, 70 second solfege um, because the the other thing that I noticed in having my students sight sing uh, is if I gave them time to look over you know in, in your typical uh, state festival right um, most state festivals as far as I know they'll give you a certain amount of time to look over a, a sight reading example and I would kind of emulate the same thing with with my choirs and I noticed that that was that was helpful for some students but there was a lot of students who weren't pushed because okay let, let's say you said you know tell them all right I, I'm giving you two minutes to look over this sight sight reading example um, you know take take those two minutes well, two minutes to your typical middle schooler or, or you know even a high schooler it's uh it's tough to gauge you know they might you know actually look it over for you know like 20 seconds 30 seconds and then they'll they'll get lost so i wanted a video series that kind of guided students and had more of a regimented approach so that it was clear to everyone what to expect um, and I'm, I'm giving giving it away so <laughs> why don't i why don't i show you this is a 70 second solfege 70 Second Solfege is a brand new approach to sight singing. There's no subscriptions, no additional materials required, and no need for lengthy teacher explanations. This allows choir directors to make their way throughout the classroom while students study each solfege example, not having to worry about giving starting notes or stay in the front of the room. Through the use of this interactive video series, students are guided through a brief explanation of the essential musical elements for each eight measure exercise as well as any challenging areas that may need special attention. The class then has 70 seconds to silently audiate the solfege while a background tempo is played. When the 70 seconds are up, students follow the solfege on screen and sing the example through twice. Then the tempo speeds up and the class sings through it once more, followed by the final challenge of an even faster tempo for the last performance. This structure not only allows teachers to monitor student performances more closely, but it also challenges students to sing through musical phrases rather than only looking at one note at a time. 
What's even better is the fact that this approach was inspired by actual choir directors who overwhelmingly stated in a recent poll that they preferred to allow students only about one minute of study for a particular sight reading exercise. Every 70-second Solfege package comes with a reproducible PDF of 30 sight singing examples and all corresponding videos, totaling nearly two hours of content. The examples range from basic quarter note stepwise examples all the way up to syncopated eighth note rhythms with solfege jumps, perfect for any middle school or early high school choir. There's also a classroom package available with all 30 individual videos and special permission for students to record their own performances as classroom assignments. Students then can complete the included performance rubric to assess their own performance and even grade their own assignment. All of these materials are available at matthewgoronsky.com. So you, you kind of um, get, get the scope of it there. Um, and this has worked really well for online learning, um, specifically because uh, teachers have been able to upload these different examples as assignments on Google Classroom. Um, and then, and, and this is what I personally do, um, especially with my, with my freshman choir, this has worked really well. Um, I will upload um, uh, you know, a particular, you know, one of these examples, it guides them through, you know, hey, you want to look out for these, you know, different uh, problem areas. Um, they, they rehearse it right there and they, they film themselves performing this and they submit that as, as a sight singing uh, assignment. Um, and even before this online learning, I was using this as um, basically as a quarterly assessment. Um, and it, it was a great gauge to see how, how students kind of progress throughout the school year uh, in choir with, with their sight reading skills. Um, and I know there's a lot of different, you know, approaches, whether it's Sight Reading Factory, um, Note Flight, all these different um, resources. But the thing that I like about this is, again, it's not a subscription-based service, so you, you, you purchase the content and you own it. Um, and I can control very easily what what exercises my, my, my class uh, watches. Um, and and I, have, I have all the content myself. So I, so I like being in control of their progress um, because hey, the reality is every choir you teach is it, you know, it's gonna progress at different rates, might be stronger or weaker at different areas. Um, so, so that's been really helpful. And that brings us to, um, I guess our last resource, um, which is, uh, and this was, I just finished this up, um, I guess a couple of weeks ago, um, it took took me a while, and I, I decided to create interactive choir rounds. I'm not going to give it away. Uh, let me just uh, show it to you down here. The Interactive Choir Rounds video package is a breakthrough approach to teaching rounds to choirs. Combining the ear training benefits of choir rounds with literacy building video guides, Interactive Choir Rounds contains three different videos that guide choirs through musical rounds that are both educational and fun. Each self-guided video rehearses two different rounds with the entire choir before splitting into three parts. These videos are perfect as warm-ups for a choir or mid-rehearsal ear training exercises. Every interactive choir rounds package comes with three self-guided videos, a reproducible PDF of the sheet music to all six educational rounds, as well as accompaniment tracks for students and choirs to create their own unique lyrics to each round's melody. Yep, this means that interactive choir rounds allow students to compose their own lyrics on the reproducible PDFs with omitted lyrics, and then record their own original rounds with the included accompaniment tracks. Choir warm-ups, ear training exercises, and creative approaches to music notation, all in one package. All right, um, and this, is, this has also been super helpful to, uh, for, for online learning. And, and because I you know, finished it a couple weeks ago, I was using this with my own choirs. And I actually had uh, a bunch of my students, I had them create, and if you notice that in the video, where they can create their own lyrics. Um, I had them create their own like quarantine inspired uh, songs for, for these different rounds. And it, because it comes with accompaniment tracks, they can write their own lyrics and then record themselves performing these different rounds. Um, now, I haven't tried this in, in person yet in, uh, in, in my classes, but I, again, I'm, I like this idea that I can take a student creation um, and actually perform it with, you know, with, with, with the choir. They can create their own rounds and you have that accompaniment track, um, which is it's just a really, 
really uh, cool way to kind of keep this evergreen where you have a resource that you can constantly update depending on the choir that you have. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's another you know fun little resource. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is the Music Tech Mastery online course. If you're interested um, in any of these resources, um, or if you, maybe you're on the other side of the spectrum and you feel maybe a little bit overwhelmed in this online learning phase, um, I wanna invite you to check out the Music Tech Mastery online course. Um, it is a full in-depth uh, 27 module course uh, where I guide teachers um, in how to create some some of these resources, these specifically digital resources for your ensemble, um, and I, the thing I like about it is it's kind of the opposite of your typical professional development course that you would take, um, because professional development, oh man, I'm so always frustrated about this. Is it just feels like it's tedious, busy work, and then maybe you learn a thing or two here or there, but you never really apply it. Well, the Music Tech Mastery Online course it guides you through creating ten of these resources, very similar resources, that you can use with your own ensemble. Um, so if you're interested in that, um, or in any of these resources, um, please check out matthewgoronsky.com. Um, th these are all available for purchase and for, for download. Um, and I wanna encourage you, as someone maybe, you know, a completely, not maybe, someone from a completely different state in a probably, maybe a very different um, cultural perspective, um, I want to encourage you that while this is a difficult time, you know, dealing with online learning and the future of music education and, um, you know, maybe jobs being cut and, and things changing, um, th this is just, this too shall pass. Let's put it that way. Um, and I want to encourage you to, to be forward thinking and uh, to to not be intimidated by by the, the difficulties that, that we're facing right now as choir directors, as music teachers. Um, and in, in, instead, what I'm personally doing is I'm taking using this time as an opportunity to grow. Um, and I want to encourage you to do that. Um, and if these resources uh, would help you to, to grow in any way, um, please, you know, check them out. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me at Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at MatthewGoronsky.com. Um, and I want to thank, again, one more time, uh, Sarah Kavanaugh for inviting me on here. I really appreciate it. Um, and maybe hopefully one day in the future, I'll be able to, to, to see uh, a bunch of you in person. Um, and again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out uh, to me at Matt at MatthewGronsky.com. And uh, thank you so much for your attention and your time. Uh, God bless you.